So today we're going to talk about the 10 worst Billy Joel songs. Um, you may have seen other lists about the 10 worst Billy Joel songs, but this is the definitive list. This is the one that's proven by science. Um, why is that? Why is this the definitive list? Because it's my YouTube channel, duh. And uh, secondly, uh, I spent up, up to about eight minutes compiling this list. So it's not like a, some slapdash thing. I spent eight minutes on this thing, uh, maybe nine if you count the time that I got up to get a drink. So this is the definitive top 10 worst Billy Joel tracks. Um, a few caveats. Uh, even a bad Billy Joel song is a great song. <laughs> I love every pop song that Billy Joel wrote from 1967 to 2007. I love all of them. And I love the tracks on this list too. I just, I love them as friends. You know, I love them, but I'm not in love with them. I'm not ready to commit to a lifelong relationship dealing with their uh, dirty laundry and their toothbrush in my sink or whatever. So, uh, yeah, even a bad Billy Joel song is a good song. So let's establish that. Um, secondly, my methodology, I decided not to include his classical music because I think that's a separate list. Um, frankly, I'm not as crazy about the romantic period as Billy Joel is. Uh, if you want to hear a really good uh, classical piece of music by Billy Joel, you have to find his live version of Elegy. It's somewhere on YouTube. You can find Billy's live version of that. Not not the symphonic version that appears on the My Lies box set. You have to find his solo version of Elegy, and you'll thank me later. Um, and I also decided not to include unfinished songs, so, you know, I don't count the Winter Crossing or Numbers or the original uh, Close to the Borderline for obvious reasons. Um, and finally, I don't include cover versions, because, again, that would also make the list a little too easy. Uh, for the record, some of his worst cover songs, uh, When You Wish Upon a Star, I don't hate it, it's, but nobody's going to make that song great. Uh, in a Sentimental Mood, no offense if you like that kind of thing, fine, but that, it's not for me. Uh, and the worst Billy Joel song committed to record that was not written by Billy Joel is Light as a Breeze. Now, I know some of you say that that's a great song and that Billy does a great job singing it, but you're wrong. Billy does do a great song job singing it, but uh, it's a terrible song and you don't really like it. What you are is in lust with it because it's a dirty song. It makes you horny, but you don't like it as a person because as a person, it is a crappy song. And let's just admit that. That is the worst uh, track that Billy has committed to record. Okay, so finally we're going to get to the top 10 original Billy Joel songs. Here we go. Number 10, Shades of Grey off <laughs> River of Dreams. Now, <clears throat> this one makes the list more or less just out of process of elimination. Uh, it, it came down to a handful of songs and I decided which one I liked the least. Shades of Grey. Uh, Shades of Grey, number 10. Uh, number 9, um, Leningrad off Stormfront. Um, when Billy was interviewed about uh, his uh, trip to Russia, they asked him if he was going to write a song about it. And he says, well, I'm not just going to sit down and write a song like, well, I went to Leningrad and then I met some kids. I'm just not going to write a song like that. Yeah, he did. That's the song he wrote. Uh, he sat down and wrote a song about Leningrad and the kids that he met, or specifically a clown that he met. Um, and it, here I just, I, did, I don't think uh, it, it was particularly inspired. I think it was a little forced. Uh, the metaphor was a little forced. Um, yeah, it seemed like the message was overriding the music here a little bit. I, I, I just think it's, uh, it, again, a great song, like all Billy Joel songs are, are great, but this is among the weakest. Number nine, Leningrad. Uh, number eight, Lullaby, Goodbye, My Angel, the misspelled lullaby. Now, I've gotten into arguments with people about whether or not lullaby is deliberately misspelled on this uh, on this album. It's spelled with an E. And people say, well, he, he did that on purpose because he's saying bye to his daughter. Really? You really think he's doing something that cute? No, no. Uh, I think he misspelled lullaby and was too proud to admit it. So, <laughs> but as for the song itself, <clears throat> it's just a little dry. It's, it's got a, it's got just a single melody block interrupted with a, a, you know, a brief instrumental. It doesn't deviate from the, from the verse too much. So I don't even know if you can count it as a bridge. And there's nothing wrong with just having one melody block. I mean, the entertainer is just one melody block. But in this case, I just, I don't think it worked as well. So that's, uh, that's number eight. Number seven is the same thing, but a little worse. Temptation off the bridge. Um, ironically, this song would have benefited from a bridge. <laughs> and I know that Billy wrote a bridge. You can find the demo somewhere where he had written a bridge for this song. And uh, it's terrible. The, the bridge is awful. And he was right to cut it out. But I do think that the song might have benefited from a bridge because I think the verse and the melody, or the, the verse and the chorus, they're just too similar. It doesn't really push the song forward in any way. And I think... It, a bridge would have helped that. I think 
it's kind of like a level plane here, you know, and I think it could have used a hill or a river or something, something to, to mix the pot a little bit, if I can mix my metaphors. So that's Temptation, number seven. Number six <clears throat> is a B-side, House of Blue Light, on the, is the B-side of All About Soul. Um, <laughs> ironically, I, if I were to make a list of underrated Billy Joel songs, this would actually be on it, because I think it's a really good song, and I don't think it deserves the flack that it gets, but at the same time, yeah, I recognize it's not one of his better songs. It's 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 a great song, but uh, it's pretty weak tea by Billy Joel standards, and that's why it's on B side. Um, number five is also uh, a B side. It's from the River of Dreams sessions. It's called uh, "You Picked a Real Bad Time." It's on the B side of All About Soul. Now there <clears throat> are a lot of River of Dreams songs on this list, and that is because River of Dreams is objectively. Billy Joel's worst album. And I know you're going to at me and say, oh no, it's The Bridge or Cold Spring Harbor. No, it's River of Dreams. And if you pick anything else, you are wrong. Why? Because Billy Joel quit writing pop music after this album. He, he came to the end of this album and said, well, I guess the wells run dry. And so uh, objectively, River of Dreams is worst album. It's a perfect album, no bad songs on it. It's great from beginning to end, but it's his worst album. Um, and you picked a real bad time. It's it's just B-side material. It's it doesn't really have a good hook. It's uh, just kind of dry. I, I, that's the, the feeling I get from it. I, I know it was made in a boathouse somewhere, but it, it's still very dry. Um, number four is Cat, off the Hour of the Wolf Hassles album. Um, this was just weird. Like I, I, the vocal and the keyboard sometimes they, they sound like they're playing different songs. Like Billy's singing one thing and the band is playing something else. It's it's a weird uh combination and it's it's interesting as a curiosity but I, I would have a hard time arguing that it's a great melody it's not particularly it's it's just kind of weird it's interestingly weird but not a great billy joel song so that's cap number four <laughs> number three another animal song godzilla amplifier fire part one godzilla off the attila album um it just doesn't have a hook it's just kind of jamming around it's just got that it doesn't really have it doesn't have a coherent melody it's just it's a lead into march of the huns which is a much better instrumental and uh i know some of you are saying well if you're if you're going to include attila songs <clears throat> are you really prepared to say that march of the huns or brain invasion or california flash are better songs than say leningrad or lullaby yes because whatever you say about the attila album and whatever billy says about the attila album they were a damn interesting band. <laughs> they were always interesting, even if they didn't always hit the mark, like in Godzilla. If it, if it weren't an Attila track, probably wouldn't punch up Godzilla too much, unless I were also wanting to listen to March of the Huns. Um, number two, uh, All My Life. <laughs> the single that he released in 2007 for his then wife, um, Kathy Lee, Katie Lee. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of fans don't like this song, and they're not wrong. It's uh, too long for what it is. Um, I'm not crazy about the whole cocktail music motif. Um, <clears throat> it does have a bridge, which makes it better, I think, technically, technically better than Temptation or uh, Lullaby. But um, it's it's still a pretty bland number, and I, I very seldom listen to it other than just to remind myself, oh yeah, that song exists. So number two, All My Life. And the number one worst Billy Joel song ever, ever, is coming right up after a message from our sponsor, which is Peanut Gallery Comics' The Eternal Afterlife Anthology. And you can buy this book on barnesandnoble.com. It's the complete comic strip series that ran in various local uh, newspapers in Minnesota. If you don't live in the area, this is a good time to catch up on the whole thing. It's uh, the whole series. Uh, it's like 15 bucks. Go buy it. You'll like it. I hear things. Good things. That's the Eternal Afterlife Anthology, barnesandnoble.com, get going. And now, at last, the worst Billy Joel song is... And now, finally, at last, we come to the worst Billy Joel song ever. And that song is Lullaby For You off the Mad About You soundtrack. Now, you will be forgiven if you don't even know that this song exists. This was a, a song that Billy wrote the music to it, Paul Reiser wrote the lyrics, and then it was recorded by B.B. Winnens for the uh, for the soundtrack to Mad About You. So does this mean it's a Billy Joel track? I, I would be hard-pressed to argue that it's not. I mean, he doesn't perform it, but at the same time, he wrote the music. 
and it's not particularly catchy music. It's fine, it's fine, but uh, it's, it's definitely weak tea, and there's a reason why Billy never recorded it himself. So the worst Billy Joel song, Lullaby for You. Worth noting that Lullaby is misspelled in this, on this version too. It's spelled with an E, so he's obviously not saying bye to his daughter, uh, which is the argument that people made for the misspelling on the River of Dreams album. <laughs> so it's clearly just that Billy doesn't know how to spell lullaby. Also, Shades of Grey, uh, Grey is spelled with the British spelling, not the American spelling, which suggests that Billy is, is an amazing talent, but a lousy speller, probably. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, let's review that list again. At number 10, Shades of Grey. Number 9, Leningrad. Number 8, Lullaby. Number 7, Temptation. 6, House of Blue Light, or Possible Light. Five, you picked a real bad time. Four, cat. Three, amplifier fire part one, Godzilla. Two, all my life. And number one stinker, lullaby for you, off the Mad About You soundtrack. Okay, that's it. Uh, make sure that you uh, buy that book that I was plugging a little while or whatever it was. I don't remember the title of it now, but it, I'm sure it was really good. You go out and buy that. All right. <laughs>